What's up, good people? It's your girl, Tanika Nikki. And I was given the privilege of having an interview with a very special young lady. I appreciate this young person for trusting me with this exclusive. It's my very first interview, and I must say uh, I'm excited and I'm proud. <laughs> Well, you guys know I try to bring you guys the truth to the best of my ability. I don't get to twisting and turning stuff, although uh, I am guilty of jumping the gun on one or two occasions. However, um, my goal is always to bring you guys unsugarcoated facts. So... With that being said, this young person is going to trust me with some some truth. It's going to help me share Jolie's story and the things that uh, transpired that day and some questions answered that many of us have had. Because as you see, it doesn't take long for a story to get twisted and turned and molded into a mess of a situation and I ain't never been a fan of no mess it's all about getting this baby's story out here but the right way the truth not the bull so again I like to thank this person for trusting me and the interviews that I do with this young person are going to be respectful. And when we chop it up, the way we do in the comment section, because you know that's what we do, we chop it up in the comment section to discuss. We're going to be respectful in that regard, too. All right, guys. Um, again, this is the very first interview of a few more to come. Because we're going to take our time and let this story um, tell itself basically when it comes to telling the truth or your version of the truth in a situation like this it can't be easy there's real emotions involved there's loved ones you know emotions are real grief is a process and I'm gonna respect that process as I do these interviews All right, guys, peace and love, and I hope you um get something out of the uh, interview. I hope it dispels some rumors uh, and shuts down some of the mess. All right, well, first off, I explained to her who I was and that I have a YouTube page. And gave her the name of my YouTube page. I also let her know that I had been following Jolie's case since the beginning. Since the first uh, moment that the family reached out to social media and asked for help. I've been head first ever since. I also let her know the few details that I had. And the latest detail that had come out. And wanted to know um, a little bit about that. So I let her know that I understood that her, Jolie Moose's ex-boyfriend was locked up for an uh, unrelated crime. But it was um, a felony in regards to Jolie. I let her know how I felt about how much privacy he's being given since Jolie didn't receive any privacy. And laying out there in the middle of a park. I let her know that I didn't believe he deserved that much privacy since Jolie was not allowed the luxury I asked for the gentleman's name I took a guess and then I went on to say that if you've ever seen my channel you know that I keep things confidential as far as who I get my information from you know any leads of that nature Anybody who's ever given me information can kind of vouch for that. 
because I've had several people inbox me things, send me things, and it's between me and that person. All right, and I also said, that you see at the top, any tip given is handled with care and privacy. I really didn't respect an, an instant reply. I thought maybe my uh, message would just kind of sit there in limbo. Maybe it'll be, you know, looked at as a uh, message read or however it goes. But surprisingly, when I uh, exited out, I got a reply. And at first she was giving me uh, the basic, you know, the basic uh, PC response. She says he's 17 years old, also attended Mount Vernon High School, law enforcement, uh, want to keep things uh, private until they can confirm that he is responsible for the death of my best friend, is what she says. Then a bell goes off. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Now, I had no idea that um, this person was Jolie's best friend. I put two and two together in this very moment. They don't want to spill and give false advertisement and then have him suffering from embarrassment in social media uh, because he's a person of interest, however, not responsible for the crime. She's explaining, very PC, you know? And I respect that. There's a lot of folks, you know, that uh, have, I guess, ill intentions when it comes to doing stuff, just put out, put out mess, you know? It gets messy. Lies get told and fairy tales get made up and all type of mess happens. So I get, I get it. Be leery at first. Personally, I do know him. He's a friend of mine. And no, his name is not Gabe. That's the name that I guessed when I was kind of, you know, trying to figure out who he was and ask basically who he was. And I put, I can understand that. If not his name, tell me what he did to Jolie that was a felony. How did he hurt her? That part is already attached to him. However, Jolie's truth is missing. Allow me to tell her side of it. She responded with, Jolie's truth will remain missing regardless. The only truth of what happened is the man who is responsible for her death. She's my best friend. It been killing me knowing that she was cause for the cause guys knowing that she was supposed to be with me as you read on the news that day she went missing I'm the friend who she was supposed to have the sleepover with so there's a bit of clarity in that as well remember the story that we were told that um, basically the twins were supposed to spend a night over a friend's house but I don't believe it was both twins. I believe it was just uh, Jolie. Jolie was supposed to spend a night with this friend. This is Jolie's best friend. And it's possible It's possible for sisters to have two separate best friends, even if they're twins. So that story that we were given was actually the truth. And in that moment, I really, really got it. You know, it sunk in. This is actually Jolie's best friend. This is actually someone who has a first-hand account of what transpired that night to the best of anybody's uh, uh, knowledge besides Jolie's. Besides anybody's understanding besides Jolie's. And the twin. And I put, oh my gosh, my heart just broke. I put her truth has to be told. Too many lies and shady people putting out stories just to be messy. And she responded as I was texting that as if she was writing it in, in an extension of what she was saying. To this very moment, I'm in pain 
because I went over to the house to pick her up just to find out that she left before I got there after work. And she knows my work hours since, since they're the same, basically. Meaning the story was true. She left to go pick Jolie up after work. Jolie wasn't there. She had just missed her. So another part of the story is verified when the twins said Jolie left out saying, I'll be right back, right back. She had all intentions of coming right back, right back. Because she had her best friend coming to pick her up. She was going to spend a night at her best friend's house. It was a Friday. So that right, that right back, right back was genuine. It wasn't no lies told by the twin. It was some facts being told. It was the truth. And she continues saying, lies running around um, about her family has n- um, about her family has nothing to do with the death of my best friend. So basically, she's saying, you know, the family's innocent. They ain't got nothing to do with that baby's death. And I think in writing, you know, sometimes we get when we're in, when we're in our emotions, we type and we miss some things in the typing. But you guys get what she's trying to say. At least I did. I put, why would she leave without you? Why wouldn't she wait? I don't know why. I don't know why she didn't wait. And it's a question I wanted to ask her, but it's too late. But she has a loving and supportive family. And I wrote, yes, she does. I know they had nothing to do with it. I was there the day we filed the report. I actually got permission to call 911 and file a missing child. So it was you that called? Oh my. Poor child. What about her uncle? What about the adults? Too much pressure for kids. Yes. And it was one of the hardest things I ever had to do. The uncle was investigating other people, so I asked permission. I think I did that one twice. Sorry about that, guys. I wrote, you must be overwhelmed or must have been overwhelmed. We were all playing FBI investigators. I can imagine is what I wrote. It was heartbreaking for me, but I kept my promise to them. And that promise is to be there and support and protective then fight for them when things got hard and fight for them when hard times come I put I understand she made sure she let me know she was the oldest she was older than Jolie and Janae so she felt responsible you know she was coming to get Jolie to spend a night with her. Uh, and I don't know if she was running late. I don't think so because she basically was saying it's the same time that she always comes and gets Jolie. The same time she always gets off work. I make sure I let her know that I understood and also said that's what friends do. She said, I spend zero time, well, I spend zero sleep just trying to solve puzzles and contacting people and using my social media to get the word out. And 
worked it. I say, yes, you all put in work for sure. I just wish the outcome was different. That's what my response was. I also said that it was so sad. I just wish I was there sooner. I said, so many families are behind you guys. She let me know that she got into a car accident due to driving in distress. I was trying to type that part where you see um, you did what you could do above that previous comment, but we texted at the same time. And it was the second day she, um, and it was the second day she was gone missing, and I was only on one hour of sleep, referring to the accident. So she, not only were they stressed out because they couldn't find Jolie, everybody's up. She, as a child herself, calling 911, uncle investigating people, dad going bananas. She got into a car wreck. It was a mess that day, y'all. It was a mess that day. I let her know that you all did what anyone would do, and the police let everyone down. She let me know, finally got back to the initial question, which was, basically about the ex. That's how I led the, um, the conversation. She started to feel a little more comfortable and we began to kind of talk more. She said, I even questioned the ex myself. I asked, where was he that day? The police seemed to be trying to push this murder on him. I think it was someone else. The man who used the boy's cell that day. From the answer I got, he only went to the first two classes and went home, and he stayed home Saturday night, too. So basically, not only... So she had the same questions that we had. And the answer she got was, basically, he left school early and went home. He also was home on Saturday. Oh, my bad. That's another double one. But again, that does uh, leave in question um, his, his, his alibi, basically. That's why the police are probably holding him as a person of, of interest, because he doesn't sound like he has a good alibi. Not only did he leave school early that day, only ten, attended two classes. He also had... Um, been at home the, the next day on a Saturday, basically. And I don't know if that's a good enough alibi or not. I don't know if he has a busy household with siblings and all of that in the third to give him a, a concrete alibi because he's a person of interest. So whatever his reasonings and whereabouts, it's not solid enough. Because if they were, he wouldn't be considered a, a person of interest. That's for sure. This is me, and it should have said, it was said that Jolie was home before Jeanne. I don't know. The boy at the park said, dark-skinned man, her ex is light-skinned. Just me trying to get in a couple of questions and let her decide which one she want to, you know, roll with. Because sometimes you can touch a hot button and a person to back off 100% and shut down on you. So I gave options. So those are my questions.
and this is what I got. I don't know much about who got home first since I only go to school for two hours. So this lets me know she's probably a senior. Um, she works after school, hangs out with Jolie after. That's her bestie. If she's not a senior, she's a really smart junior to only have two hours of school. Jolie's 16, so she's probably a junior as well. So, yeah. And I responded, then you go to work and was supposed to meet Jolie after at her house. I get it. I just don't know why she would leave if you were, and you can imagine what I responded as. I just don't know why she would leave if you were coming to get her. She put, I don't know either. That's, that lets me know that she really was coming right back. Did she keep in touch with uh, him even after the incident? Were they still cool? That's me asking about the boyfriend, getting back on the topic, trying to see, you know, what happened? What really happened? And, and kind of help her think, too, because it seems like she drawing that straws and piecing it all together herself. So we're just having a conversation right now. She put, she had to be, let's just say they talked, they talk here and there is basically the response. Here and then is what she said. But I always try to convince her to move on and let him go. Uh oh, sorry about that y'all. Please tell me what he did. Did he have a weapon of some kind or threaten her and threat or threaten her life at any time? You know, silly boy shit that we don't uh, take serious. Just hitting. And I pried a little bit. I said, how was that a felony? She said, assault. And I was like, okay, I get it. So. If it was a felony assault, it wasn't a slap or something like that. He probably punched her or something for them to call it a felony assault. He bust something, maybe her lip, her eye, something happened. But there was no weapon involved. I know a lot of people had questions about that in regards to... um the reason for it being a felony. Because most people say uh, when it comes to felony assault, that includes weapons, but not so much this case. Then I asked about the African friend. I say, tell me about the African friend. Is he a possibility? Then she says, is it possible I can text you tomorrow? I'm lacking on some sleep. And eating these cup and so I'm sleeping and eating these couple of days and I'm drained and low energy and I got work and school tomorrow. I let her know that I apologize for being uh pressuring her and thanked her for talking to me and I promised to keep her ID private. I say we will talk again tomorrow. She, she asks, if you post this, can you let me know the day before you're going to post? And I said, absolutely. I would just tell Jolie's, I just want to tell Jolie's story, the truth. She deserves that. She said, don't worry, I'll be on social media, and I will fight for justice regardless. I let her know that I would post this brief bit, but all other convo would be tapered and said verbally, you know, instead of by text the way this one is. 
That way, I can say what needs to be said tactfully. Justice for Jolie. Sleep well. Talk to you tomorrow. She says, thank you. And that was that. I really appreciate her for trusting me with her side of Jolie's story. When it comes to go ahead and, um, when it comes to getting the truth and going ahead and getting to the bottom of things, there's no better source than someone who actually is a, you know, a part of the story. So I'm going to, um, keep you guys posted, of course. And as I stated, you guys, any, um, commentary that you guys decide to leave, make sure it's respectful. Um, not saying that you don't, you're not allowed to ask whatever you want to just, you know, be nice. Again, this is your girl, Tanika Nikki. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of humble and excited about the fact that, you know, I got my first real interview and it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, follow up story possibly tomorrow or maybe I'll let it breathe for a day. You know, I don't want to be overwhelming. It's all about getting Jolie's truth out there to the best of, uh, my ability. It's pretty cool. Peace and love, guys.